to welcome you to worship this morning. Uh, we come thankful that it stopped raining for now, which is, which is lovely. Um, we come to worship. We come to focus our minds uh, on the Lord. If you happen to be visiting with us this morning, you're very welcome indeed. Uh, it's good to have you, you with us as we come to, uh, to worship the Lord together. A few announcements just to make before we begin. Um, Mums and Tots is on Thursday morning at 10.30. Uh, I'm just going to be pushing Mums and Tots over the next uh, two or three weeks. Uh, I guess our, our, our numbers have been quite low, uh, so we're at a point of asking, uh, you know, do we, keep, do we keep doing Mums and Tots? We're keen to. Uh, we're keen to, for people to use <coughs> the facility. So perhaps you could just spread the word. If you do have family who have small children, uh, we'd love them to come along on a Thursday morning uh, between 10.30 and midday. Day, uh, Thursday morning, 10.30 to midday, Mums and Tots. We have our prayer meeting, our Google Meet prayer meeting on Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Uh, we'd love you to join us for that. Uh, it's always a time uh, where I think we come away feeling really blessed uh, from spending time in, in prayer together. Uh, that is on Thursday evening, Google Meet, 8 p.m. If you'd like Google Meet details for that, uh, I can happily get those for you. Next Sunday, we have uh, a Gideon service. Uh, Eric Borland is coming to take the service uh, next Sunday. So it's a Gideon service uh, next Sunday morning. And Youth Fellowship meets next Sunday night also, uh, Sunday the 22nd, uh, 7 p.m. in the Scott Rooms. Uh, Youth Fellowship next Sunday evening. Uh, that, I think, is all the announcements uh, that I'd like to highlight. Uh, we come to worship. We read it in the book of First Peter Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let's come to prayer as we come to worship. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are present with us as we worship. You are in our midst and Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. It's a wonderful and amazing thing that you are here with us. So we come seeking to worship you, Lord. We come from a work, from a, a, a week, Lord, um, which has held many things for us, Lord. Many things to be thankful for in, in this past week, Lord, things that have been good. But also challenges, Lord, challenges in this past week, things that we have found difficult, Things that we perhaps could have done better ourselves, Lord. Things perhaps we need to confess to you, say sorry for. But Lord, we come to refocus ourselves in this time of worship. To remind ourselves who it is we serve. Who it is we seek to walk closely with each week. And Father, we look to the week ahead, Lord. We pray that this time of worship, Lord, will be a time of refocusing a time of committing ourselves, dedicating ourselves to you, uh, and committing the week ahead to you, Lord, that we might walk closely with you and serve you in the week that is to come, Lord. So we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand and we sing together Psalm 100, all people that on earth do dwell. Thank you. 
going to read from God's Word, and we're reading from the book of Ephesians. Uh, we're starting a series uh, in Ephesians today, which we'll run through until in around Easter time. We'll work our way through the book of Ephesians. So Ephesians uh, chapter 1, reading from verse 1, page 240 on your pew Bibles, New Testament section, uh, if, you'd, if you'd like to look it up, I'd encourage you to do so. Ephesians 1, reading from verse 1. This is God's Word. From Paul, who by God's will is an apostle of Christ Jesus, to God's people in Ephesus who are faithful in their life in union with Christ Jesus, may God our Father and the Lord of Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for in our union with Christ, he has blessed us by giving us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. Even before the world was made, God had already chosen us to be his through our union with Christ, so that we would be holy and without fault before him. Because of his love, God had already decided that through Jesus Christ, he would make us his sons. This was his pleasure and purpose. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear son. For by the sacrificial death of Christ, we are set free. That is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God, which he gave to us in such large measure. In all his wisdom and insight, God did what he had purposed. He made known to us the secret plan he had already decided to complete by means of Christ. This plan which God will complete when the time is right is to bring all creation together, everything in heaven and on earth with Christ as head. All things are done according to God's plan and decision. And God chose us to be his own people in union with Christ because of his own purpose, based on what he had decided from the very beginning. Let us then, who were the first to hope in Christ, Praise God's glory. And you also became God's people when you heard the true message, the good news that brought you salvation. You believed in Christ, and God put his stamp of ownership on you by giving you the Holy Spirit he had promised. The Spirit is the guarantee that we shall receive what God has promised his people. And this assures us that God will give complete freedom to those who are his. Let us praise his glory. We give thanks for God's word to us this morning. Let us again come in prayer to the Lord. Our loving Father, we come to praise you today. We come to worship you. You are a God of glory. Father, we come to thank you that you have made us in Christ your children. We praise you for Christ our Savior, Lord. We come to worship you, God. You are our creator. We praise you, God. Not only for the power you displayed when you created the world out of nothing, but also for the love, the love which you continually hold us with. You hold us in your caring arms. We praise you and thank you, Lord, for the way you have demonstrated your will. Not only through creation, but also through your continued sustaining of all things through Christ. Christ who is Lord of all. We have come to add our praises to those whom down through the centuries and across the world, those who have seen your glory those who have recognized your purposes, and those who have responded to your love. Lord God, our creator, we are only too aware that our praises are, are in a sense, never fully worthy of you. But Lord, we bring our worship asking you will that you will receive it. Receive the hymns that we sing, the prayers that we offer, the commitment that we make, 
We pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would transform all that we bring into praise that is acceptable to you, praise that brings you glory. Lord, you have made us for freedom and for responsibility also. But often, Lord, we confess that we allow ourselves to be molded, controlled by other people's opinions, other people's ideas. So often, Lord, our lives are, are governed by our wants, not by our needs. We can sometimes allow decisions to be made for us. We are sometimes guilty of simply allowing our lives to drift by. Father, give us strength. Give us courage and determination to stand up for what we know is right, for what we know is true, and to stand up for you in our lives. Help us, Lord. Enable us to live boldly for you, loving, being loved, knowing that we are by faith your sons and daughters, that we are cleansed and renewed through Christ. We ask all this through Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My girls and boys, would you like to come up to the front? Now, boys and girls, in the sermon today, we're going to be thinking about a whole lot of words. They're going to be up on the screen here, I think. Words that come out of the passage that we read. Words that indicate blessings or benefits that we get from being a Christian. Or the phrase in the passage is, in Christ. If you're in Christ, you're a Christian. So all these benefits and blessings that we get from being in Christ. Now, there's two words here that are quite similar. I'll give you one of them to make it a wee bit easier. There's a word holy, yeah? See the word holy up there? And there's another word, blame. Mm. I've given it away. <laughs> I've given it away. The other word is blameless, okay? Holy and blameless. They're sort of similar, aren't they? Similar words. You know, if you're holy, you'd be blameless. But I think you can be blameless maybe without being holy. Well, think about that, won't we? I'll tell you a story that might help. Now, when I was a boy, uh, I had a good friend, and I went round to his house one day, and he had a box of Quality Street chocolates. And he said to me here, Richard, would you like a chocolate? And I said, great, you know, you know, Quality Street were my favorite. And there was a chocolate in it called a coffee cream. Coffee cream, you know, coffee cream up on the screen there as well. Coffee cream, that was my favorite. So I had the coffee cream from there, and there was another coffee cream, and I had it as well. And he said to me, Richard, my dad's favorite is coffee cream, and he's going to be cross that you've eaten all the coffee cream chocolates. Yeah? So we went to his mom and dad, and we offered them chocolates, and his dad looked through, and he said, I can't find any coffee cream chocolates. And he said, who ate all the coffee creams? He was really cross. He was really cross, and he kept on going, who ate the coffee creams? Really, I thought, not a big deal, you know, come on. It's only a chocolate. So anyway, I was getting really worried. I thought, I'm going to have to own up here that I've eaten all the coffee cream chocolates. And as I was about to own up, my friend, his son, said, I ate them. I ate them. Now, he didn't eat them. I ate them. All right? But he, he said, I did it. He took the blame. Now, he told a lie. He shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't tell lies. But he took the blame. And it meant that I didn't have to. Because after that, I was blameless, wasn't I? Because he'd taken the blame. So when his mom said to him, how could you do that? You know your father's favorite, favorites are coffee creams. Yeah, so his parents were really annoyed with him that he'd eaten these chocolates. He took the blame, and I didn't have to. And I was thinking that's a little bit like how it is with us and Jesus. Yeah? He takes the blame for us, doesn't he? We've all done bad things. We all sin. Yeah? God, I think, is, you know, God doesn't, God's angry with sin. He's angry with it a bit like my friend's dad was angry about the coffee cream. God's angry about it. And there's a price to pay for that. But Jesus has taken the blame. 
He has taken the blame. Yeah? So we are blameless because if we believe in Jesus, we're blameless. We're not holy because holy means to be perfect and pure and never have done anything wrong, never have thought anything bad. That's holy. You know, we're not holy, but we're blameless because of what Jesus has done. And I think that's wonderful. I was certainly relieved when my friend took, took the blame for the coffee creams. Yeah? It's a wonderful thing that Jesus has taken the blame for us. Uh, and we're to be really, really thankful for that and to believe in him uh, because he has done that for us. Here, we'll, we'll pray and we'll thank God that Jesus has taken the blame for us. Father, we thank you that we are blameless because of what Jesus has done for us. That he died taking our place, taking the blame for our sin. Lord, because of that, we can be forgiven. So I pray, Lord, that you would help the boys and girls just to know how good it is that Jesus has taken the blame for us and that we are forgiven our sin because of that. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for listening so well. We're going to sing again. We're going to sing. He made the stars to shine. Okay, you can take your seats. Sunday school. The offering will be received. Father, you are a God of grace. You give us so much. Thank you that out of what you give to us, Lord, we can give to you. We can give to your work. We can give to your kingdom purposes, Lord. Bless what we've brought, Lord. Use it. We pray that you will be glorified, that your kingdom will be built up and extended through these gifts. We ask it in the Savior's name. Amen.
going to bring our prayers for others now. Let, let us pray. Loving Father, we want to remember those this morning who are persecuted for being Christians. Those who face such difficult challenges simply because they believe in you. Lord, we're aware that in many places in the world, Lord, it is just so hard to be a Christian. That your life can be at risk. That you can live each day under the threat of violence simply for believing in Jesus. So, Lord, we want to pray for Christians in places like North Korea, places like Afghanistan, places like Somalia, Lord, that you would keep them safe, Lord, that they would have a sense of your, your protection, your presence with them, Lord, that they would be trusting in you, knowing that they are safe in you no matter what, Lord, no matter what happens to them, they are yours. And Father, we pray for these places where it is so difficult to be a Christian. Lord, we pray that you will be touching the hearts of government's leaders, Lord. Changing their hearts, Lord. Such rebellion and resistance to you, Lord, and to the Savior. That they might see that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, Lord. That they might even look to you themselves. Loving Father, we want to pray for those who are simply finding their work difficult at the moment. Stressful, challenging. Be near to them, Lord, that they might know your help. That they might have a sense, Lord, that you're really with them, helping them in all the difficulties they face. That they, they will have a sense of your peace, Lord, in, in the challenges that they face. We think of those who are studying, Lord, University or college, Lord, and just finding, finding it tough at the moment also, Lord. Be with them, Lord, that they would have a sense of your grace, a sense of confidence, Lord, that you're in control. Lord, we want to pray for those who are facing financial hardship at this time, struggling with that, anxious about how they will afford to live over these next weeks, months. Father, help them to know that you will provide all that they need, Lord. You are faithful. Their needs will be met. Loving Father, we want to pray for those who are simply doubting in their faith at this time. Those who have perhaps been drawn away from you, Lord, by this world and the temptations that it presents to us. Father, we ask that you would hold them tightly to you. that you would be near to them, that they would have the sense that you are there, you are real, you are worth serving and following. Help them to trust you and to be kept safe by you, Lord. Loving God, we pray for those who are simply feeling down at this time, feeling low. We pray that by looking to you and, and looking to the Savior, Lord, that they would be lifted up that in you they would see a hope and a joy that is just beyond words and beyond measure. So we pray you would lift up those who are feeling down. We think of those who are unwell at this time, Lord, and those who are just having ongoing hospital treatment, Lord. Bless them and hold them, and may they have that reassurance that comes from trusting you, Lord, knowing that you are with them. Father, we thank you that you are so near to those who need you. You are so near to those who reach out to you and, and seek your help and your assistance and your strength. So, Father, we bring all these prayers to you in the name of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Before we come to think about God's word, we're again going to stand and sing. Be still for the presence of the Lord. <laughs> 